just for the record, I don't need all three of you to clap. Oh. Time. <laughs> no, no, no this is a ritual. <laughs> look, look, look. <laughs> it's not about you, okay? Oh, Mike, Mike gives us a one and a two and a three and Three, two, one. So here's my real intro. In five, yes. four, three. Well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Yep. The excitement of walking down the aisle, scanning the names in the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you were going to take home with you. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your house, but there was something truly special about making that trip with your buddies while listening to Bohemian Rhapsody, picking a movie out by hand, and watching it when you got home. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, two founding members of the Shitty Beatles, Sean Pryor <laughs> and AJ Vance. How the heck are you? We're pretty good, though, I gotta say. Uh, it, I think it's more of a clever name that people realize. Yeah, you know, we were trying to be ironic. You know, were the shitty Beatles the headliner that right. night? Because it wasn't Crucial Tone. No, right? no, no, it definitely wasn't. They were just finishing up their set, <laughs> so, so they were like the shitty opener. <laughs> yeah, for the shitty Beatles. Yeah, I think they were like on their way up. You know, <laughs> they looked scared when they got to the stage. They're like, "Fuck, that was good." That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're shitty by name. <laughs> Well, boys, it's time to introduce today's movie. On this episode, we discuss the second movie of more than 10 total movies that have been adapted from Saturday Night Live skits, perhaps one of the most universal and well-known comedies of the 90s, a movie whose dialogue became an instant part of 90s culture and spawned a sequel. We are, of course, talking about 1992's Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Yeah. Woo, 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 woo. I, I, I kind of want to redo that. I don't know if we won't do it. Uh, for everybody looking to find the movie as of the recording of this episode, in early June 2022, it looks like you got to buy it. You find it anywhere? Got to buy it on the Prime or you got to own it already? I, uh, yeah, I popped my DVD in. I think it kind of comes with every house, like I've been saying, <laughs> too. Yeah. So. yeah. Do we have a full list of that? Yeah. Of like, uh, I will, I'll get you What one. all happens? Like, I think there's a Rubik's Cube. A Rubik's Cube's there. Uh, uh, Titanic, Titanic box set. Yep. VHS box VHS set. VHS box set. VHS box set. And what, then... What's really play. exciting is Sean is actually going to be moving into a new house yeah. in a couple right. weeks, so we might actually like find out yeah. if Sean's right about yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. I think when I get there, I'll be. Uh, they are usually tucked in like the kitchen cupboard. Yeah, it's not for some sitting reason. on. It's not on the counter. You right. got to find yeah. it. It's a nice surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, everybody, in order to properly dissect and review this movie with a modern eye, we must first discuss it with pure nostalgia. AJ, start with you. Tell us the first time you saw it, what you thought about this movie, what your nostalgic rating was. I can't tell you like about the first time specifically, uh, only because uh, I've watched it way too many times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> like I can't pinpoint when I when I watched this the first time, and back then you just watch so many things, so many like like jerk jokes and just like <laughs> dick jokes and like all these things like just go over your head yeah because it was mike myers and dana carvey and they were just funny guys and they're just oh these guys are just wacky wow. yeah. Ooh, okay and uh like uh, but i can't wait to be 16 yeah <laughs> <laughs> don't you ever say that <laughs> um but i just i th this this was like the first time I really ever saw Mike Myers, so this is what I thought he looked like, yeah, it's like <laughs> that's a really good point it's man. like it was like the first time I ever thought or, or I ever saw will Farrell was an anchor man, so it was weird to see for me to see him without a mustache and like that face, so I was just like, okay, um, this is Mike Myers, this is Dana Carvey, this is just who these people are, yeah, and um, I loved it. I thought it was funny. I laughed because all my family was laughing. I laughed because my friends were laughing. I really enjoyed this movie. I am just going to give this uh, a nice, solid 8.5. Nice. 8.5, or Sean, what about you, man? Yeah, kind of the same, honestly. I, I kind of can't even tell you the first time I watched it just because it's we watched it so many times, like AJ said, and... Every, I mean, I can. What I can say is that every time we put it on, it, we watched the whole thing. You know, like it was a commitment yeah. to like watch this movie because it's so damn good. 
Uh, so I'm just gonna say uh, back then I'd probably give it I'd probably give it like a seven point five. Seven point five. See uh, again because I am a little bit older than you guys. <laughs> I actually was a Saturday Night Live watcher at the time, which was a big deal culturally, and so I knew Mike Myers already, and I actually saw the skits mm. that they did prior to making this movie. So uh, yeah. like this was definitely a big deal for me because we thought it was funny on Saturday Night Live. I mean, you've got hilarious jokes, awesome quotes. Super cool guys, awesome music. Yeah, this was this was definitely a big deal. I mean, I was ten years old. I was looking for like something, you know, some identity. And it's like, oh, cool. This is like what what friendship is and what life yeah. is. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was not one of my favorites, but it was definitely an important movie. So I'd say seven point five, nostalgic for me. Right on. Mm. Executive producer for today, Tyler Dark. Here's what he had to say. I'll have to say I was a bit young when I first watched this one, probably 10 to 13 years old. So a lot of the references went over my head. Physical comedy wise, this is a classic. Wayne and Garth have tons of on-screen presence. Wayne is big, bombastic. Garth was the crazy little weirdo, re- weirdo that <laughs> those guys drew younger me's attention like a magnet at the time. I was also a huge fan of Austin Powers, so Mike Myers was already near and dear to my heart. Before this review, I hadn't watched this movie for years, and I still remembered that. I no, I still remembered the selling out scene. <laughs> Nostalgic <laughs> review for this one, my guys, is going to have to be a solid seven out of ten. Nice. We'll see you in the super happy ending. <laughs> he actually wrote doodle. <laughs> I don't know how you <laughs> think it's spelled, but that's how it's spelled. He took most of the time on trying sure. to. Word that I like probably <laughs> exactly. I respect it. Thanks, Tyler. So nostalgically, as a group, we are a seven point six three. Which, if you'd like to know, in our giant uh, rankings of all the movies we've done, that is slightly better than Encino Man, slightly worse than Big Lebowski. Nostalgic rating. Wow, it seems okay. to fit right there in yeah. that in that nice little comforting. Good okay. movie. We really like it, yeah. but it's not our favorite. Yeah, yeah. I like it there. That's yeah. fun. Feels good, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, friends, listen up. Before we move on to Sean's informational details segment, I'm going to give you some details about our sponsor, Felix Gray Glasses. Oh, yeah. In case you don't know what they are, they make blue light filtering glasses that filter out all the harmful blue light that hits our eyeballs constantly all day long. These aren't funny-looking glasses like your Zach Galifianakis blue blockers. These are completely <laughs> normal-looking, stylish, comfortable glasses that protect our eyes from the damaging effects of blue light, which emanates from computer screens, phones, TVs, probably just from the world now. It's probably yeah. just like in the world, and it's just like, yeah, 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 just right in your eyeballs. It's just ambient light from all the cities. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, it is. It. <laughs> it's no secret we love these glasses, and we each have multiple pairs, so it shouldn't come as a surprise to know that we're happy to give you some guidance if you're thinking about buying a pair. A friend of the podcast, Derek, messaged me a few weeks ago and said that he was thinking about buying a pair of Felix Gray glasses instead of a pair from his eye doctor. So I told him that, like, obviously I threw away my, eye doctor glasses I, I just tossed them in the garbage once i got my felix <laughs> craze uh that's how i knew how awesome they were and it sounds like he pulled the trigger so i'm excited to hear how much he likes them awesome if you guys got any thoughts or questions about what pairs we wear shoot us a message we're yeah, happy to help definitely mm-hmm. these felix gray glasses are stylish affordable and they look like normal eyewear people wouldn't even know you're wearing special filtering glasses but you'll be glad you didn't when you realize all the negative effects that blue light has on you don't be afraid to reach out we will tell you the truth non-prescription prescription Description available. Go to FelixGrayGlasses.com slash confused. That's F E L I X G R A Y glasses.com slash confused. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges. See the future. See the future. Felix Gray, don't be a nerd. <laughs> Look for the bird. <laughs> hey. Yeah. yeah. Right. How about one of these one. days, man. Get at us, Felix. How about it? Huh? Mr. Gray. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Gray. I can keep going. <laughs> I'd go all day. All right, Sean, let's move on to this. Get all the pertinent, important details of this movie for us. What do you got, man? You got it. Produced by Lorne Michaels and Hawk Cock. Mm. Written by Mike Look Myers. for the bird. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Hawk, c- Hawk. Mike Hawk? Hawk Coach. <laughs> Mike Hawk. I don't know. <laughs> it's just Yo, please, keep going. Yeah, <laughs> <Okay>, please. <laughs> yeah. Written, by, it. written by Mike Myers and Bonnie and Terry Turner. Cinematography by Theo Van de Sam- Sande. Uh-huh. Edited by Malcolm Campbell. Directed by Penelope Spheris. Cast, Mike Myers, Dana Carvey, Rob Lowe, Tia Carrera, Brian Doyle Murray, Laura Flynn Boyle, Michael DeLuise, De Lu- De De <laughs> Lee Turgeson, Kurt Fuller, Robert Patrick, Meatloaf, and Chris Farley. Mm-hmm. The character of Wayne was originally created by Mike Myers for Second City. 
Uh, when Myers was cast in, in SNL, he brought the character with him, but Mike Myers wasn't very well known, so Dana Carvey was added as Garth to give more dynamics to the bit. Uh, he originally like didn't want another. It was supposed to be a solo film. Supposed right? to be a solo, a solo kind of character that he did, and uh, uh, Lauren Michaels was like, "Well, you're not well known, so we got to get like an, another cast right. member to join you." And, and Dana Carvey was huge. Technically, he was a bigger star yes. when, when he came on board. Huge at the time. Yeah. Do you remember the Dana Carvey show? It lasted a season. Did you ever see uh-huh. it? I think I saw parts of it. There's only one really funny bit. They they drove to like a. a Fast food drive through and they're like snickering in the car. Like, <laughs> she goes, "How can we take your order?" And they they order like three hundred dollars worth of food and they're like, <laughs> and they pull forward and she goes, "It'll be three hundred and seventeen dollars." And they pay her, and then right before she turns around with their food, they're like, "Go go go go!" <laughs> and they leave. <laughs> That's the joke. That was the funny bit. And then I don't think anything else is funny. <laughs> that was the one standout bit. It was the one standout bit that me and my dad laughed at. <laughs> 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 After the, s- the success of the Blues Brothers, Lauren Michaels got the green light for our second SNL sketch-based film, in that being Wayne's World. So the success of Blues Brothers, the first SNL movie spinoff, uh, that was in like the 80s. Yeah, I uh, think it was 80. 80. 80. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, and then this uh, t- 10, 12 years later yeah. was the, the second to one. To use Sean's phrase, we will be covering that movie. Oh, we yeah. Will. I like how he, he always goes, will. <laughs> we will. <laughs> and then, it, then people are still like, well, you said you would. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Penelope Spears was hired to direct after Lauren Michaels had seen her amazing documentaries, The Decline of Western Civilization. Have you guys seen any no. of those? Mm-mm. She has one about um, at punk music in the like, late 70s, early 80s, I believe. Damn. Uh, where she just follows these musicians around, excuse me, <gasps> and, uh, sorry. Wow. <laughs> you know the rule, your phone goes off, take a shot of Cedar Ridge. Oh, shot. no. <laughs> no, don't. I'll take a sip. Oh, my God. Oh, jeez. Um, and then the, she made another one in the <laughs> 80s based off of, like, all the 80s music, and uh, there's a famous scene from one of those documentaries where uh, she's filming someone in a pool. I forget what band he's in, maybe, like, Warrant or something like that. He is just chugging a bottle of vodka, and he says, "I'll drink myself to death. I don't care." And his mom is right on the edge of the pool, just watching all of this. It's nuts. Whoa! <laughs> yes. But it's really good. What's it called again? Uh, the decline of Western civilization. I'm in. Spheris was struggling at the time as a director, directing mostly alien documentaries, <laughs> and she said that getting Wayne's World flipped, getting Wayne's World flipped her career around in the best way possible. Uh, and I, I, I love all of her movies pretty much. Yeah. Uh, um, she did uh, Suburbia. Was Dude, her first movie. I just watched that again the other day. It's that's great. A, that's a pretty hilariously intense. It is sad movie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Wayne's World was released on February fourteenth, nineteen ninety two, with a budget of twenty million. The film was a massive success as the tenth highest grossing film in nineteen ninety two. Wayne's World Whoa. made one hundred and eighty three point one million at the box office, and wow. immediately spawned a sequel. Yeah, like absolutely. within like twelve months, they were like, "Here's the sequel." Yeah. <laughs> it was fast. <laughs> It was fast, and it was a, it was a decent sequel though yeah. too. Yeah. I imagine once they doubled their money, w- at what they spent they on the movie, they're like, said, "Okay, yep. go, go ahead, just write it." Yeah, <laughs> bring Chris it. Farley back. Do, do the same movie. <laughs> Hurry. <laughs> Well, before we get in the next segment, don't forget your tasks for being a confused breakfast lover. Leave us a five star review on your podcast platform of choice. Sign up on Patreon. There's like 50 hours of, of upcoming like weekly bonus audio that you can go back and get. Patreon.com slash confused breakfast. Check us out on YouTube. Buy some merch. Uh, yeah. You know? Do check that. out our social media accounts. We're g- currently being shadow banned on TikTok, so yeah. maybe you can go check it out. And That's fun. Figure out how to get us more views on there. That'd be great. Come we on didn't over do anything to, wrong. Come on over to Instagram because they don't care. Yeah. Instagram <laughs> is the way. Join us on all that. Check the show notes. Go to confusedbreakfast.com. And up next, AJ Vince is going to do some research and tell us the ratings and reviews of critics and fans alike. Wait, wait. Five, four, three. Oh, no, you don't don't we mouth get, two and one. Okay. Okay, you're good. You're good. We're in. <laughs> you're <Right>. nodding. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, we are here and ready for the countdown. Well, we just did it. <laughs> for the tomato <laughs> meter. Yeah. I almost Gross. forgot. <laughs> fresh. Nice. <laughs> Certified. Was that, was that fresh. pulling the splat back? <laughs> you're pulling the, the splat back. That's the reverse snare. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, 79%. Nice. Certified fresh. I think that's like as, as close as you can get. It's like, yeah, that's a C plus. We'll give them the certified. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you made it. Yeah. That it's is, fine. That is uh, tied with GoldenEye as far as the critics oh, really? are concerned. Wow. Same movie. They're basically the same Same movie. movie as far as the critics are concerned. Yeah. Basically in scene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, audiences agreed a little bit more positive, I guess. 84%. Okay. And IMDb is seven. Just plain old seven. Seven point That's our second seven in a row. Happy Gilmore was also a seven, which was also Monster Squad, Cool Runnings, Uncle Buck, Bill and Ted. Any all movie. Sevens. Any movie starts out at seven. <laughs> seven. <laughs> it's just, are you better or worse? Hey, here's <laughs> this. Uh, enjoy <laughs> it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, well, let's uh, let's start at the at the bottom. We'll work our way up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Globe and Mail. Jay Scott had said he gave it a twenty five out of a hundred. Uh, Wayne's World has been engineered to amuse people who are mere images of its heroes, but it goes wickedly wrong. It's so dumb. It talks down to the stupid. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> Jay Scott. Wait, I'm stupid. Wait a second. I take offense I to like that. This movie. <laughs> I enjoy that. Is he calling me stupid? I don't know. Um, yes. Okay, perfect. Empire gave it 60 out of 100. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thanks to the engaging performances and a sharp script, the movie is essentially a series of three-minute sketches filling at one, 101 minutes uh, that could be just the right choice for that Saturday night date. While Wayne speak. While Wayne speak will no doubt be quoted and become part of the English language. Accurate, yep. And I believe it has. Extremely <laughs> accurate. <laughs> Some things are so deeply ingrained that you even forgot they're from Wayne's World. Get yep. the net. Yeah. I say it all the time. I say it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. The Hollywood Reporter. This is, uh, what, I believe this is one of the higher ones, actually. They gave it, they gave it an 80. Um, it's, this says, uh, the plot is a bit light, even to be carried on Wayne and Garth's droopy shoulders. Uh, it's splendidly smart, dumb stuff, uh, but even demanding uh, hypercharged viewers whose, whose systems have been over-injected with junk food will be pleasantly stimulated by the screenwriter's series of kooky, non-sequitur asides, uh, sequiturs, aside and side roads venture to Milwaukee. That was hey, really hard. Hey, to read. here's a review. It's a pretty good movie. I think you should maybe see it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't have to use all those words. I know. It's like there's a lot here, and you here's, just here's you, ninety hyperboles. Yeah. <laughs> in thirty years, some guy on a stupid podcast is yeah. trying to read this. Yeah, I'll, I'll get him. <laughs> some stupid guy who's slightly hungover. Stop using non sequiturs to describe non sequiturs. This is horseshit. <laughs> Sometimes we're hungover when we do this. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I get the shakes. Uh, <laughs> no. Straight up, can't read his phone. We we not I'm having a good time. <laughs> Let's get some positives going here. Ten out of ten uh, from from these watchers. Uh, quant uh, cr <laughs> Cricket Bat said that this is a time capsule of the early 90s. Yep. Wayne's World is essentially a time capsule of the early 90s. <laughs> 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 it's amazing how much influence this movie had on music, on comedy, and on pop culture in general. Unlike many other SNL sketches, this is one that actually works on the big screen. This movie is random, it's ridiculous, and it's hilarious. Mm. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. I love it when they, like, I just picture they write their whole thing out and they go, and now for the title, what's my best line in here? <laughs> <gasps> That's my best line. That's the title. <laughs> the first thing I say. The first thing I said. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call my review. This, is, this movie is Wayne's World, and this is what I thought about it. This <laughs> movie is Wayne's World. This is what I there was one on here that was just, uh, it was just called, I should have I taken this one down, but it just said, my notes. And it just, he was just like, this is not a very good movie. <laughs> it's like, it was like two sentences oh, wait, long. Wait, so my note? <laughs> yeah. Dude. I'm telling you, like, oh, here, I found it. I'm going to read this one. It's, it's just, a, it's a three out of ten. My notes. Some funny parts, but not a lot. And some is just awful. Dana Carvey made me laugh zero. Mike Myers is funny, but this movie sucked overall. <laughs> one viewing. I like to think that he took, like, 
notes on his note thing from his phone and just yeah. copied and pasted yeah. them on the on the website. Yeah, <laughs> my notes. So I forgot to take that out. Damn it. Um, let's go back to another positive. Buy eggs. Buy <laughs> Damn eggs. it. Right next to buy eggs. My Wayne's World notes. It's gonna rain tomorrow. Mow the lawn. <laughs> Uh, this is Manhattan 3198 said best comedy movie of the 1990s. Mike Myers and Dana Carvey. The 1990s, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. Whoa. But better. Whoa. I know, I know. Dang. Together, these two work, but spectated from each other. They are er, separated. Must mean separated, guys. <laughs> together, they, these two work, but separated from each other. They are terrible. Best comedy and freshest, most original idea for a movie since the 1984 Ghostbusters movie. Wow. Yeah, because uh, Michael Very... Myers definitely had zero success moving forward. <laughs> no. Without Dana Carvey. Yeah. It was I really, don't think really anything really tough happened. on him. I nothing can't think really of happened. I can't think of three uh, movies in a series no. that were pretty <laughs> successful. Yeah, yeah, neither can I. Yeah. Yeah, no, no problem. Um, we're good. I'm gonna give you guys one more here, uh, and then we will. Get done with it. Uh, one of the most overrated movies I've ever seen. One out of ten. D Jersey Guy. <laughs> <laughs> this movie was made before Mike Myers knew how to be funny. His comic chops were not at the standard that we were accustomed to. When originally made, this movie was 45 minutes long. I can see why. There's just not much of a redeeming factor while this movie, while watching this movie. I felt like I wasted an hour and a half. Dana Carvey, in in my estimation, is not and has never been very funny. His Yikes. brand of comedy may have worked years ago, but it does nothing to put nothing but put a damper on an already awful movie. For those of you who wasted eight or nine dollars to go see this movie, I'm truly sorry. For those of you who buy this movie, I truly feel sorry for you. <laughs> And for the actors who made this movie. (laughs) And and for the people that don't like joy, I hate (laughs) I'm sorry. He sees Wayne's World on someone's shelf, the home he goes to, and he's just like, oh, I'm going to pray for you tonight. Oh, no. I feel so bad for you. You're in my T's and P's. Sorry about that. (laughs) Why do you feel bad for me? T's and P's, baby. (laughs) Well, we are seconds away from reviewing this classic movie scene by scene with a modern eye. But first, I want to tell you about our favorite way to watch movies. This is my particular way. These nostalgic movies from my past. I grab my notebook, my pen, I sit on my comfy couch. My cat, Sergeant Meowenstein, instinctively crawls into my lap. I grab a glass of Cedar Ridge whiskey with some delicious Cedar Ridge in there. It is the absolute perfect way to relax my mind, erase the stresses of life, and allow me to focus on the movie without distraction. Many times I choose to use their incredible flagship bourbon, which was just named the number one selling bourbon in the state of Iowa for the second year in a row. Wait, what? And I make an old-fashioned with it. Hell That's how I use yeah. that. Uh, I mean, it's, it's literally perfect for a craft cocktail. Sometimes I prefer the quintessential American single malt, just neat in a fancy glass. Mm-hmm. Just let it go. It gives you that scotch vibe uh, without the feeling that I sat around a bonfire for seven hours and just directly breathed in bonfire yeah. smoke. Yeah. That, like, it doesn't feel like you threw a box of Band-Aids into the fire. And, and then, then just yeah. breathe them yeah. in. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's the scotch vibe without that. Right. Which is why it's so yeah. good. <laughs> Other times I take a bottle of the number nine, the collaboration with Slipknot. I pour it over a single large cube and I let it marinate. The ice slowly turns into water and meshes perfectly with the rye bourbon blend. If you're a whiskey drinker or have someone in your life who is, please stop by your local liquor store and pick up a bottle. If you don't have it available in your area, you can get it online and have it shipped directly to your door. We promise that it's amazing, and we know you all love it. These guys are in our backyard. They're quickly becoming one of the best whiskey distilleries in the entire galaxy. For more information and ordering links, go to cedarridgewhiskey.com. The link is also available at confusedbreakfast.com and in the episode notes, cedarridgewhiskey.com. You won't be disappointed with this decision. Please drink responsibly. Cedarridgewhiskey.com. Cedarridgewhiskey.com. Well, boys, what do you say? We head to our parents' basement with our friends and nail another episode of our cable access show before we pile into a car, head out on the town to bask in the glow of our local stardom. Hopefully, we'll find some cool rock bands and some fine rocker chicks. Game on! Game on! Game on! Game on! Game on. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> so, in Aurora, Illinois, Wayne Campbell and Garth Algar host a public access television show called Wayne's World. A broadcast of their show catches the attention of television producer Benjamin Kane. 
While out cruising with his friends in Garth's car, Wayne stops to admire a 1964 Fender Stratocaster in a shop window. Later in the evening, they go to a nightclub. Avoiding his ex-girlfriend, he falls in love with local rocker Cassandra Wong. Mm-hmm. Can I can I bring up one thing? Yeah. Yes. Is essentially what they're doing, this local access cable show, is this essentially a prediction of podcasts? I yes. <laughs> I was like, there's so many similarities. Oh my god! Yeah. To like what we're doing and what we're going through, like with the sponsors and shit coming up later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's basically like every podcast in America is in their parents' basement. Yep. Yeah, they've got friends <laughs> helping out. We don't know if anyone's watching or listening. Yeah. We're just kind of yeah. like, I don't know. This is pretty fun, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just okay. We're we're doing it. We got a kick. I've got a kick-ass public access TV show. <laughs> it is, man. I felt like I was watching a documentary on what we do. Yeah, like <laughs> to it some degree. I'm it's kind of true. Yeah, and then for those of you, like some of you may not remember, but I mean, in the in the eighties, like early nineties, there was like local cable mm-hmm. was a big deal. And there they would have the ability to do these local cable access shows yeah. where you could reach just a small population of your town and it would be late at night. And so I, we're assuming there this is like 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night. They have yeah. this little 15 minute spot yeah. or something like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But they wouldn't, I mean, they wouldn't like do it from their basement. It would be at a studio somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they like would broadcast that or Maybe they re- pre-record it and send it in. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I but don't know. It, it gave me some podcast vibes for sure. Yeah, 100%. I, I remember. Uh, I think he was out of Chicago, but you could get it in uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. To Sven Gulli, uh, yeah. he just like hosted horror movies. You know, that kinda, was a that I was like a still local going. cable thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like out of Chicago or something like that. But he's obviously gotten gotten a little bit bigger and reached out to a little bit more people. But yeah, I I like that vibe a lot. It's awesome. <laughs> it's really cool. I like um, Rob Lowe. Just yeah. like got done banging a chick or something like that. She's she's like, we haven't been to Shakey's in so long. I'm like, is that what you call it? Is that what <laughs> well, you're calling? Well, so is she? Do you remember Shakey's? It's like a, it was like a restaurant. Uh-uh. I don't remember it. It was it was I think it was like a chain restaurant back then. And there's a outfit in the corner that looks like a Shakey's restaurant outfit. Oh, so like, Are you serious? Did he? Was he just? Was this just a, a waitress? That makes total sense. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Mm. It, uh, it just, Big yikes. <laughs> I mean, I got more to talk about uh, Benjamin Kane later. But yeah, yeah, I noticed that this time around. I'm like, is that just a was that just a waitress? <laughs> yeah. Shakey's? Yeah. Because you can see it in the corner. There's an outfit just kind of like right there. Just, There's a little hat. Just chilling. And stripe. Good job. Just yeah. chilling, man. I, I, like I, it. I didn't I didn't recognize that. I just think it's it's very funny. That he they are just laying in bed and just flipping through channels. Like, is there like, are they, <laughs> yeah. is it that boring That's there? What it was, man. <laughs> like, I just think that he's I, he, maybe he is just like the most boring guy actually ever. That they just got to revert, revert to television <laughs> to a public access TV show. <laughs> maybe maybe they tried and he like just he was he couldn't get it up. Oh no! And so he's like, oh. I gotta watch a little TV before. And then once he was once he got an idea, he's like, "Oh, I got a boner now." And then once he got a money making scheme, he's like, "Yeah, yeah, exactly." Yeah, that's what gets him going. <laughs> um, how do you guys think Suck Cut would fare on Shark Tank? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> as you can see, <laughs> it sucks. Well, it cuts. <laughs> it sure does suck. <laughs> Get a load of this guy, Cam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think those I think that those like uh those like sweep ins or those those overlays are like our sound bite buttons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's Ooh, basically yeah, it's yeah, it's like, like, get a load of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's like really well produced too. Like it, it's it's a show that I would watch. Yeah. Oh, 100%. oh yeah, just two I, dudes fucking around. Yeah. I would totally watch that. I, and you can see why and it's hard to it's hard to determine, like I guess they are popular, right? Because they go out on the town and and people are like yeah, which yeah. is not World. which is not reflective of podcasts, which is very not <laughs> reflective <laughs> of podcasts. We go out, no one no. knows. We we have faces for podcasting, <laughs> yeah. so that's that's what we get to deal with. Like I love I love his uh his intro as he's like introducing everything and like <laughs> and I, one of my favorite things that makes me laugh for probably no reason at all is when he walks into his kitchen and he says I live in. Aurora, Illinois. <laughs> it's like this is kitchen, like okay, <laughs> like it's not like the it's Aurora. not like later on when they're standing in front of pictures of cities. <laughs> yeah. He's just in his kitchen, Aurora, <laughs> Illinois. 
it, it's such a great voice too because like i did hear some old he he apparently worked this character out uh on like second city i guess mm -hmm. and it and it was very canadian it was a canadian uh wayne campbell yeah okay uh, and so it had that accent i think wayne is canadian or uh, sorry, uh, Mike Myers. Mike Myers, yeah, yeah. Is Canadian. Uh, yeah. But so he changed that to Chicago. But it's weird how his voice changed. He's it's like he's always got like a sinus infection, kind of mm. like Ugh. you know, like <laughs> I'm not good at impersonations. Yeah. One but, more like, time, do that one more time. Hi, uh. <laughs> 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 but like he, the, it's amazing how he talks the way he does. Because if you really break down yeah. that voice, like can you even do his voice? Uh, it's kind of a Maybe. weird impression, you know. It, it, it is a it is a weird one. It's, it just sounds like he's always kind of stuffed he, up. He does have like a Chicagoan yeah. twang to it. Yeah, like he does. You know, Ch Chicago. You know that kind of yeah. that kind of like yeah. Midwestern twang, I guess. Yeah, which is I guess would be hard to do if you know. Yeah. you're from a different country and you say a boot. Yeah, you know? a boot, Garth. <laughs> <laughs> marriage is punishment for <laughs> marriage is punishment for shoplifting in some countries. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> he's he's very relaxing. How how yeah. his cadence is like super relaxing yeah. to me. That he makes me feel immediately welcome, like in the group. The yes. way he's just like, ciao, it's cool, man. It's very yeah. it's very cool, dude. Well, I know they they shot uh, this movie pretty much in L. A. Mostly like all the, all the exteriors and some of the like uh, interiors and stuff. They shot. I think they shot only two days in actual Aurora, Illinois. Really? Yeah. Um, and I know that uh, um, uh, he uh, Mike Myers in Canada like grew up like twenty kilometers from Aurora. Canada or like Aurora, Aurora Ontario yeah, or something, something like, like that. that. And so it was just kind of weird. <laughs> you know? like, he, yeah, we're just going to make that. He he like just he heard the he heard the name Aurora again and decided that's where I want it to be based because yeah. he make, liked the way it sounded. It makes complete sense though. It yeah. feels right. It feels like the right choice. Yeah. yeah. Because you're like a you're it's like when I used to go to the University of Iowa and people were like, "I'm from Chicago." And I'd be like, well, no, but where are you yeah, from? Uh, well, Aurora, Aurora, <laughs> which is <laughs> yeah. 45 minutes away from downtown Chicago. You yeah. know, like it, it's the perfect setting for him to just be like, well, I'm just a yuppie from the suburbs, but I can get into downtown yeah. right. if I need to. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, another another great reference I love is I've had plenty of Joe jobs. <laughs> I love the I, I've used that a couple of times. And then it's just like it's just like yeah, it's my Joe job. Like <laughs> a couple of Joe jobs. I have an extensive collection of name tags and hairnets. <laughs> I would love to do Wayne's World for a living someday. And it's like same here, same, <laughs> same, same here, here, dude. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah, as if, as if, and monkeys might fly out of my butt. <laughs> <laughs> so, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Um, a little tidbit um, on this. They originally wanted a Guns N' Roses song. Which would have been such a terrible idea. So I, I don't like Guns N' Roses first off, but... And it's at just, that time, it would have been like a, a current Guns yeah. N' Roses hit. Yeah, like a like a, off of Chinese it would have been like democracy. Sweet Child of Mine or, yeah. or something. Um, but having Bohemian Raps, I think is Mike Myers fought for... Bo He's like, I'll quit if we don't have this song yeah. like in this scene. And uh, so there it was. Um, but apparently... Uh, Mike Myers was kind of fucking hard to work with on he's this a, movie. He was a creative diva. Yeah, you know, like he, he he like didn't get the right cream in his coffee one day and like fucking flipped out. Or uh, like in wow. that in that particular scene, he was like, "Why are we shooting this so many times? Why do we have to bang our heads?" It's like, come on, dude, we're filming a fucking movie. Like, this yeah. is your movie. Well, it's weird that he's. It's like he sensed how important that scene was gonna be. Yeah, but then he like didn't want to go all the way. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> the most iconic scene in this movie. The weird thing about Bohemian Rhapsody is if you think about it, it was it was like almost 20 years old at that point. And it wasn't like what we think of Bohemian Rhapsody right. today. It wasn't this just like, oh, the best song in the world that everyone knows. It really wasn't a big deal. Yeah. And so it was a weird choice to put into this movie. Yeah. Like I can see why Lauren was like, no, put why in the hot we, new yeah. 90s Guns N' Roses song. Axl Rose is so cool. Yeah. You know, like, let's do that. But that that was the most epic choice of all time yeah. because that that scene single-handedly became like one of the most iconic scenes ever mm -hmm. and r instantly revitalized it's like the it's the tv show effect now it's the yellowstone effect it's yeah. the what just happened with stranger things, stranger things. it's that it's yeah. that moment but a slower burn you know where it takes an old song and goes ah instant revitalization right yeah. 
And, and it was like it was amazing. Unfortunately, um, Freddie Mercury knew about it, but didn't get to see it happen. He had just passed. See, I, I read something uh, that that might be true because I think I read both where he did see just that scene like right before he died, and he laughed. His oh, ass okay, off. yeah, he saw it, but he didn't get to see how it revitalized Not the whole movie or yeah, the whole movement of how it revitalized that song. Right. But that song, that song is th- this might be one of the most iconic music moments of any movie ever. I oh, say yeah. probably top three. Uh, it has to 100%. be hundred percent. And if you if you over if you want to overthink it, you know these guys are musicians. You know, it's weird. They're like musicians, but then they went on to do a <laughs> show. <laughs> they gave up their music dreams to yeah. do some sort of other art, other form. other art outlet. Art form, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> Medium. Um, <laughs> but I think if if you really think about it, it almost shows like an, an appreciation, like this music appreciation that they have that's deeper than just rock. You know, metal. Yeah. Oh, we listen to metal. It's like no. All these dudes definitely look like metal guys, like 80s metal guys. But at the same time, um, they're listening to Queen, you know, that like like Bohemian Rhapsody and starting it at that part of the song and appreciating it. And I love that. I love that so much. The movie takes its its time to like pretty much do the whole song. Yeah. And I like I like that a lot about it. So you're just watching dudes love a song. Yeah. That's kind of fun. I I, I think it's kind of beautiful that. Freddie Mercury did see it. Yeah, and it like, feels good. And he's like, "Yeah, I like it. You can go ahead and do it." And it's like one of the last things that he did before he yeah. died. It's like, yeah, that's so cool. Well, because I think I think that uh, they couldn't. I think they had issues even securing a Guns and Roses song because uh. Guns N' Roses like, "Give me forty million. Yeah, yeah. oh gosh, we're but gonna I, be in Terminator too. Yeah, it's fine. It's gonna be awesome." So knowing that that uh, Freddie and and everybody was just like, "Yeah, go for it." Yeah, that sounds awesome. It's cool. My my favorite part of that scene though is not the is not the like the head banging. Is <laughs> it's, it? when Garth, when Garth <laughs> when yeah. nothing really matters. He goes, <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know the words. But so like I thought that was a I thought that was a creative writing choice. Nope. But apparently he just didn't know the words. <laughs> And they were, <laughs> and he was like really upset, wasn't he? Yeah, he's like, I, I, I wish I could fucking take that. He like, he had to learn the lyrics on the day, and he just couldn't. And so like after the movie came out and everything, he's like, God, I look so fucking dumb. But but that like he shouldn't have said anything. Yeah, because it was like, no, that's what they they wanted my character to be. <laughs> it works for him, you know. Like we wouldn't have thought any different of it. <laughs> if, if if I had not read up on that, I would have been like, that was Dana Carvey's a genius. Yeah, Dana well, Carvey's a genius. In that vein too, like when they when Dana Carvey first got to be Garth, like in the ske- in the sketches and everything like that, when, uh, Mike Myers told him that. Uh, Garth is essentially like a lover of Wayne. Like he will do anything. He worships Wayne. Wasn't that all he gave him? Yeah, that's that's about it. He's like, hi, 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 Mike. I'm Dana Carvey. Nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, I'd like some notes on what this character is. You love me. You love me. You worship that's a, that's me. That's it. You try and get your hair like me. You know. Um, I don't like that. Yeah, but it kind of like it works for like that where he's just like he's not really a f- <laughs> he doesn't actually he's like not the like song. an actual fan of anything really. He just likes it because Wayne likes it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's a good point. Side just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so classic. <laughs> I think I think they roll then they roll into the diner Makita's donuts. So yes. cool. It, it's I always still I hated um, uh, Ed O'Neill. As a kid, I don't know why I didn't like. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like Married with Children as a kid because uh, I didn't understand it. So like, it was just w- his character in this movie was so weird to me. Yeah, <laughs> and I still have trouble being like, what is he? What is this guy doing yeah. in this movie? What I, is the point of this? I agree. I think he was just like on, in the sketches on <laughs> SNL, and they just had was him in the he? movie. And I, I think can't remember. I don't know if he like just like created. He's like, I want to do this character where I'm unhinged and I'm about to snap at all well, moments. Nobody talks to the camera, but us. <laughs> yeah. uh, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I had never done a crazy thing in my life until that night. <laughs> one of my, one of my favorite things is right after that. Uh, Garth, Garth's like, hi. Uh, or he's like, hi, I'm Garth too. He's like, Oh, what's that? Ooh, <laughs> 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 It's like he wanted his screen time, but then he didn't yeah. think anything to say. He's like, I don't really have anything to say. <laughs> What's that? Oh. The and then we get our introduction of uh, Laura Flynn Boyle. Uh, oh, the crack one open. The gun, the gun rack scene. I d- I didn't understand at all. Like I'm just like I don't understand. <laughs> I like, didn't either. Well, what's a what's a gun rack and like what does this have to do with anything? But that I mean this this is definitely one of the more iconic quotes of the movie. Oh, I think. God, it's it's. 
amazing. Number one, I when I was a kid, I always wondered, why are they being so mean to that girl? Yeah. Like she seems kind of nice. She's a like, psycho hose beast. I don't know. She's, she's not this like, <laughs> like a psycho hose beast. Uh oh. D- don't make eye contact. <laughs> Psycho hose beast. <laughs> she she kind of flip trips on her on her heels as she walks over. <laughs> she is an amazing She's like so presence <laughs> in this movie. And like that quote is just like I got you a present. Like I got you a present. If it's a severed head, I'm really very upset. <laughs> <laughs> He's clearly been like being mean to her for weeks, and yeah. she's not taking the hit. No, it's I, a very, it's a very squeak in basketball moment. Yes, when she's yes. like, "If you're not careful, you're gonna lose me." It's like, a, <laughs> it's like if you say that thirteen or fourteen more times, I'm very upset. <laughs> I'm out of here. Uh, apparently, that was kind of inspired by a real life girlfriend oh, of Mike no. Myers. Uh, and like he, like she bought him a gun rack in real life, and he's like, "I don't, I, what am I gonna do with this?" <laughs> and. Uh, when the movie came out, she like she saw it and like called him up and was like, "That's fucked up. Like I'm a psycho hose beast to you," <laughs> and so he like eventually kind of apologized. And I think he like in uh, and then uh, he married her. He, oh yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> in Awesome Powers or something like that. Like he dedicated a character to her or something. Oh, like okay, that. like he felt kind of bad, like besmirching her character in the I movie. Mean, yeah. Movie, it's yeah, a movie. It's a license. Movie. We're not our personas on this podcast. No, no, not at all. Everything we say is just made up. I don't <laughs> drink unless I'm here. That's right. <laughs> I don't actually like the Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. Um, because they suck. Uh, this is just a character. <laughs> yeah. Can you hit that button for me, please? Uh, which one? The props. Oh, oh, oh uh, it's this one, I think. Ooh, here's a prop. <laughs> a Stan Makita's Cafe Donut Shop mug. That's mine. <sighs> Nice. I can. I bet we can find that on Redbubble. I I'm bet you find can that too. For you. It's not really like an outstanding one, but that would be a cool relic from this movie for me. Oh my god! Do you got one, AJ? I don't have one. I yet. had a tough time on this one because, like, there were some obvious ones, but I kind of wanted something unique. I settled on uh, at the very end of the movie the Noah's Arcade presents Wayne's World neon sign. Oh, cool! Yeah, I- I'm collecting through our props in this movie. I'm yeah. collecting some signs, some so neon. I feel like that's the sign I want. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I you, like that. Could you imagine, like, if we could actually if get we, all these? If whatever we actually said we wanted, we there is just a room of of this. Like, yeah. well, oh, that's from that. That'd be so fucking. We'd open cool. Open up a room like he opens up, like to <laughs> yeah. the guys like training, like James Bond. <laughs> <Yeah>. Somebody's gonna <laughs> NFT us and yeah. like be yeah. like, yeah, we can get you those things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just <laughs> Um, originally I was thinking that I just want the like skating Stan Makita thing on top uh, of that yeah. building. That's pretty awesome. However, I am going to take his hat. Garth's belt. Garth's, Garth's belt. Nice. Yeah. Belt. That actually a works. Fucking dope thing. Hell yeah. <laughs> That'd be cool, man. So that, that uh, Stan Makita's I I wish it existed. I know, like it'd be so cool. But apparently, it was a Tim Hortons instead. Yeah, <laughs> like, which is weird that they're just like, yeah, we're yeah. just gonna change the name. It, it's Chicago, so Stan Makita. Stan Makita, he's but a legend. I got a few things that he could do with that gun rack. To be honest, <laughs> oh, um, okay. let me find it here. Oh, I don't God. even own a uh, gun. You could put your hockey sticks on it. Cool. It would hold your hockey sticks. Good point. Uh, you could wrap all your podcast uh, show your public access cables on to it. Oh. Um, yep. You could... Uh, that's about it, actually. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> pretty much all we got. I think that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much you could do with it. I don't even rack. own a gun, <laughs> let alone many guns to necessitate an entire rack. <laughs> what am I going to do with, with a gun, gun rack? rack. <laughs> <laughs> so they go down. I, I totally forgot Meatloaf was in this movie. All right, R.I.P. R.I.P. Meatloaf, man. His name is T- Robert Tiny, Paulson. Tiny the bouncer. Yeah, Tiny the bouncer. That that that's one of my favorite fucking lines of the movie when he's like, "Who's playing tonight?" Uh, we got the Jolly Green Giants and the Shitty and Beatles. Beatles. And the Shitty Beatles. <laughs> Are they any good? No, they, they suck. suck. <laughs> <laughs> they suck. So it's not just a clever name. That's fucking, I love that. Because that is like every conversation I've ever had with a door guy at a, at a local <laughs> yeah, band yeah. concert. Yes. <laughs> Who's playing tonight? Rattles off a bunch of names I've never heard. Are they any good? No, they fucking suck. No, they suck. <laughs> Give me your 10 bucks. I, was, I, I watched this movie like three times for, for this show, and I always feel bad that they didn't. Like, re, like They never give him a <laughs> high five. Like, Party on. He's like, and they don't do it. I feel so bad for him. <laughs> he's just like, and he, you know what? But he, it doesn't trip him up. It doesn't matter. Yeah, he's like, Tiny's doing fine, he's man. He's just like, hey, Wayne. And like Garth, <laughs> Garth really just stiffs him like yeah. real hard. He's just like, he just walks by. Hey, he's a bad out of hell, dude. He's, oh he ain't, he ain't he got, is, man. He right. need a high five from a public access show. 
Well, uh, what year was actually uh, Bad Out of Hell? That I album? think that was about 80. A late, late 80s. 80s. Okay, yeah. so so Meatloaf was, yeah, okay. It was one of his first movies, I think, right? Uh, definitely. I mean, he really wasn't small. in a ton of them. Yeah. But the, I, I wrote this down because uh, I didn't do any research, as always. Um, I'm, <laughs> we're watching Crucial Taunt, right? Yeah. And we're yeah. seeing Tia Carrera yes. and Sandra. Yes. And I'm like, th- is th- I wrote this down. Basically, is this the best uh, lip syncing performance ever. I believe, I fully believe that Tia Carrera's character is singing this song. Mm-hmm. And then I went on to my research. I was like, oh, she did sing that song. Yep. She is singing it. <laughs> that's why. Okay. I, it, that's that's mind blowing. She to makes me. it look really good. Yes. Like, it sounds great yeah. and she fucking nails it. I believe her fully that she is Cassandra mm-hmm. and she is a rock star. Wasn't aren't some of her songs like on the soundtrack yeah. too? Why you want to break my heart? It's it's a good song. Yeah. I and, like it. Uh, the um the ballroom blitz. Yeah. The ballroom blitz. Which version. is oh, oh cool. You're a cover band. Oh yeah. cool. Yeah. Crucial taunt. Ugh, I could do without it. <laughs> With <laughs> and, the cover? Yeah. Uh no, I I like it. Like it, it she does sound really good and like all the instrument or like all the band members they, they look great they look like they're doing what they're actually doing they, and i yeah hate that in movies and shows where when they I don't can, sync well then they don't sync it up or like they hit like a crash and it's, they're still on the high hat yes. or i hate it but it it worked well and they this all movie. i Except tried to look them all up for her what? with her oh, bass she, playing she, she, well dude there she, was a few times where it kind of sold yeah. she sort of sold it but a couple times where it's like you're not playing the she's bass. not playing that bass line <laughs> and she's like one place like <laughs> come on man yeah, she's just like on the, the bottom two strings yeah like i get it but at the same time it's the, like it's like the bass one of the most crucial parts yes. of that song the crucial <laughs> taunt of the, the song. crucial taunt of that song i i do every movie we ever see a band this is like three out of five where there's never a pa yeah. <laughs> at the club. there is no there is no pa at this club oh they God. all have in-ears man it's yeah. fine it's all in-ears. the whole crowd's it's, it's a, a silent, silent disco, disco. <laughs> Yeah, way cool. Hey, dope. dope I, I love it. I, there was another couple of movies we've done where I'm like, come on, just set up a PA. <laughs> just put some speakers Go to there. an actual music venue and do this. Come on. But I, I, I feel for uh, for Wayne Campbell because there's been many times in my life where I've walked into a bar, a music club, and there's been a, a, a female rocker, and I've just been like, I yeah. love you. <laughs> many, I, many times. I love you. Like I want to have your babies. It's it's like, yes. <laughs> she will be mine. I'll take that Same thing. Like, you, you don't yeah, even right? hear the song that's playing. It's the dream <laughs> yeah. weaver. Dream weaver. <laughs> and she's like screaming. And you're like, dream weaver. <sighs> yeah, there's... Dream weaver. It's just like the the uh, the confidence. Like, yes. on the onstage confidence and just like, you, you that stage is yours. I'm like, ah, oh, it's so hot. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Wait. <laughs> yeah, are you not feeling it? <laughs> no, it's like I, I could. It, it's fine. You don't like it? It's, it's fine. It's just like uh, it's cool. You don't like Tia Have Carrera? You? Oh, I think she's great. <laughs> you just don't think she's a good bass player. Yeah, it's kind of upsetting, but yeah. You know. <laughs> it's like, do you do you have a particular uh, woman musician that that happened to you on? Um, in real life, no. But uh, there's uh, uh, I forget her name, but she sings for the Kills. Uh yeah. Uh sh- I um bl- my mind is blown every time I see her and I'm like I want her so bad. I walked yeah. into Gabe's uh, Oasis in Iowa City once and saw Pretty Girls Make Graves, Andrea Zolo, the frontman woman singer for that song. I was just I was in, madly in love oh, from that moment on. I didn't even hear their set. I was just hearing Dream we <laughs> <laughs> And now you're like the one that got away. Yeah. Yeah. In that insanely like lo- overly loud top Top floor of Gabe's. Yep. <laughs> yeah. She still have, like, I think I sent her a friend request on Facebook like 15 years ago, and I think it's still on, still like, pending. pending. <laughs> <laughs> still waiting for that one. <laughs> Why so aggressive during Jimi Hendrix? Like, there's pits and, and fights yeah, and, and, and bullies. Like, why are you doing that with Jimi Hendrix? I get I get pumped up with Light My Fire, but... Um, was, this, uh, was this song still going on when... Garth went and got his belt yes, on, yes. and then he came back, yes. and it was like still going still on. I was like, "Wow, yet. that's a long version. <laughs> this must be the long cut. <laughs> this is the jam version." Okay, great. Yeah, I uh, love this part. I thought this is the coolest thing as a kid. Was that stun belt? It's basically yeah. like data from the Goonies, right? Dude, it basically, is yeah. He, he like puts that like looks like a tuning fork on like steroids <laughs> that he put in there, and he just and he like 
kind of parks up behind him. He's like, excuse me. <laughs> and that's like goodbye now. now. <laughs> What do you want, your little worm? It's like, I hate that. I hate that. Yeah. If we were on a train to go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. That's what I'm talking are we, about. Are we finally in agreement? Yeah. Is that the most punchable yeah, face this, in this movie? This was hard, like, thinking about him. Like, I like, even Rob Lowe, I like him a lot. I, like, he's too pretty to punch. It's yeah. got to be this motherfucker. I this, hate him. It's him, man. With I, Rob Lowe, I was like, I want to destroy something beautiful. You yeah. Know, like, Fight Club. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, but, but I think this is my guy. This is my most punchable face. 100%. Dude, absolutely. He just des- he deserved what he got. And, like, he's just standing there just like, yeah. Yeah. He's hearing Dreamweaver in his head, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Dude, my one of he's my... He's infatuated with Cassandra. This is the same. And he's just <laughs> mad at Garth because he's interrupting it. <laughs> It'd be awesome if you looked over at someone like while you were at Gabe's and looked over while Dreamweaver was playing. And they were doing it, and it too. And he's like, oh, Dreamweaver. Oh, you, you got two? She's mine. <laughs> I one of my be mine. One of my next pet peeves in movies while like the music's going on and like the audience is the extras in these scenes. They're always like, <laughs> yeah, or just like, or like one of them will be overreactive, and it's probably like the director being like, "Don't do that." Like, like watching Garth pull out the thing, she's like, "Oh, and yeah," then, and then, <laughs> she, then it shocks me. He's like, "She's like, oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like the, oh, stop it." Yeah, I know exactly <laughs> what you're first and last about. role ever. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> see if they if they properly did this movie uh, for an original band concert, uh, no one would be moving. They'd all just be going like this. <laughs> Yeah, you, Arms crossed. Just most, going. most of the guys that would be in the back just like, impress me. <laughs> I don't know done, this song. And then when the song ends, yeah, woo, woo. Yeah. One guy. <laughs> yeah, yes, that, this, is normally, this is normally what you hear. Yeah. All right. Thanks, yeah. Guys. <laughs> All right we're going to play free Fire. Birds, free <laughs> Well, let's move this on, boys. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so Benjamin meets Wayne and Garth to convince them to sell the rights to the show for $5,000 each. Later, Wayne returns to the music store and purchases a Stratocaster with the money. Benjamin attempts to steal Cassandra from Wayne using his wealth and good looks by distracting Wayne and Garth with all-access tickets to an Alice Cooper concert in Milwaukee while offering to produce a music video for Cassandra's band. I forgot to say one thing while he's hitting on Cassandra and he's like, hey, can I call you sometime? He says like two things to her, by the way, and is that's confidence right there. But uh, he's like, hey, can I call you sometime? He's like, you can come to my loft party or whatever. And he's like, I'll be there. <laughs> just, <laughs> one of my favorite moments is like he just looks at the camera and like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> anyway, sorry. They go. Um, so when when uh, Benjamin comes down to meet them, he goes directly to their house. He finds out where they're doing it, and they're doing the show. Yeah, and he's holding like a Heather Locklear thing or yeah. something. And, and Garth says, "I'm getting tired of holding this." And Wayne says, "That's what she said." Yeah, <laughs> so, Claudia Schiffer. Sorry, Claudia that's, Schiffer. That's right. Yes. So he drops a "That's what she said." My mind starts racing. I'm wondering, is this? The first that's what she said ever. That's what she said. Oh my so god. So I did some research on this. So the this was definitely revitalized by this movie. But the earliest version dates back to nineteen seventy five. Chevy Chase on Weekend Update said that's what she said. Wow. Nineteen seventy five. But before that, uh it was a British thing. It was in the early nineteen hundreds. The joke was as the actress says to the bishop. That was the the same implication of that's what she said. Huh. As the actress says to the bishop, they were using that. A test reel for Alfred Hitchcock's blackmail turned that phrase into as the girl said to the soldier. And here's where it gets crazy. AJ, I'm about to blow your mind, right? So in the current popularity of that's what she said, yeah. Ricky Gervais yes. started using as the actress said to the bishop in the British version of The Office. Yep. Which then, in the current office, then, <laughs> then <laughs> they then took that and said that that's what she said. They started doing that. Wow. That's so amazing. Brilliant. I, isn't that insane? <laughs> it's my favorite thing ever right now. Because <laughs> AJ does have another podcast. Yeah, I do. It's all about The Office called Scotch and Splenda. Scotch and Splenda. And AJ it, knows more about The Office than you do. Anybody. 
<laughs> I'm telling you. It's weird, but yeah. Did you know did you know that at all? I didn't realize that that was like the origin of it, but like when you got onto the train of like a British thing, yeah. I was like, go, uh oh, if what's you're going to bring Ricky Gervais into this, I'm going to lose my shit. <laughs> so te- right. awesome. so technically Chevy Chase is responsible for this, yeah. uh, but Wayne's World was the reason it came back into pop culture. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Just like Bohemian God, Rhapsody. That's great. Same what thing? was the first one? It was uh, an actress says to it the It says the as the actress says to the bishop. I'm going to start saying that now. <laughs> Be like, I'm getting tired of hold of this. As yeah. the actress says to the bishop. <laughs> Thanks, man. Got him. Oh, cheeky joke, f- f- chap. <laughs> yeah. Cheeky joke. How about that? <laughs> we got $5,000. We, we, <laughs> we got $5,000. <laughs> what would you... It's, it's what the w- dance into that club. It's a very Encino Man dance. It is. It really is. <laughs> Basically. What, like would what, you, what would you have bought with $5,000? Would uh, you have bought a 64 Fender Stratocaster? A brand new fence. That's what I need. <laughs> and I, I'm, no, 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 no. I'm scrounging for it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh actually I'd like to ask you guys uh so a 64 strat he, did you see how much money he gave like he pulled out, he pulled out the money when he bought it it was like all 20s right a 64 fender strat classic white with single coil pickups and a whammy and a ball whammy bar. <laughs> <laughs> uh so do you does anyone know how much cash he pulled out of his hands when he he goes uh uh-uh. uh 2000 bucks in 1992, does anyone know what the current rate? I'm wondering if there's anyone in the room who knows anything about guitars. Producer Jeremy, what is the current rate for that guitar? I just looked it up. Uh, Twenty-seven thousand dollars. Twenty-seven thousand dollars is what that guitar would be worth today. Holy shit! So when your wife yells at you for buying a classic guitar, just be like, it's worth. It's gonna be worth more it's money. It's gonna be worth more money. Yeah. You pay two. Th- Ah. The range is anywhere from nineteen thousand to seventy-seven thousand dollars. If me. you if you didn't hear that, nineteen thousand to seventy-seven thousand dollars. Because correct me if I'm wrong, that was the last good classic year of that guitar. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> as a as a man who knows nothing about guitars, I got a bunch of eh in the well, room. They, uh, um, after the success of this movie, uh, Fender made like uh, they remade those guitars a little, little more cheaply, actually. But they had uh, Wayne's World like on the back of it, I think, or like on the neck, maybe on the head, I guess. Uh, and just just for the the success of the success of this movie, they uh, just re released them. Did they and file t- down the nut and take the buzz <laughs> out of the low yeah. E? <laughs> It's like, what are you talking about? I love this woman. How do you, like, how do you know it has a buzz? It's it's like this, this, like, was that model, Jeremy, just (laughs) notorious for a buzz in the low E? (laughs) (laughs) Well, everything about this scene is, is like weird. Whammy bar. And a whammy (laughs) bar. But then, like, the stairway to heaven thing, the stairway to heaven thing is so weird to me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I guess he, Jeremy worked at Guitar Center, right? Yeah. I mean, I guess that's a thing. But but the weird thing about it is then like they they're buying into this joke of the like no everyone plays Stairway to Heaven on the yeah. guitar, but they can't even fucking buy the rights to the song no. to actually play four notes of the riff. Right, right. It wasn't so, anything so of it. I had never heard Stairway to Heaven when I saw this movie, so I was like, "What the? What's the big deal about what's that? What's the big deal about that?" <laughs> and then when I finally heard Stairway to Heaven, I'm I'm waiting for that riff. I'm like, I know. That riff never happens. What is? What, what were they talking about? <laughs> they said that it, it showed up as the uh, as the actual notes of the song. I believe in a theatrical version of this movie. Seriously, so maybe in the theaters. In it the was... theaters, that's what it was. They had like they had two signs that said one oh, said yeah. no stairway. <laughs> Another one was like stairway with a with a red circle. A red uh, circle. Uh, and then they had the original like notes that he played, but then when they had to when they re released the movie, they they changed it in post and they changed it to four different notes. Huh. So that's what they did. It's huh. just stupid to me that you would have to buy you'd have to buy the rights to this fucking song yeah. for five notes. Yep. Yeah. Fuck you, Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. They're gods. <laughs> I know, They're I didn't gods. mean that. Sorry. Uh, I like when um uh, Benjamin's talking to them. He's like, well, I, I told Mr. Vandenhoff, he's like, you guys aren't really interested in money. He's like, no, we're not interested <laughs> in money. 
<laughs> I fucking love that. <laughs> and, uh, and so, now, and Benjamin just kind of, kind of just yucking it up. Is he, is he a great salesman, Mike? Do you think? I, I got, I got weird things with Benjamin because, like, I don't think modern day look at this. Like, I don't think he's a big wig. Like, I think Doesn't he's just a lower peon. In fact, I think that whoever's place he takes them to, I don't think that's his place. Oh yeah. I think he was with a why would he be with a shaky's waitress? Yeah. In a weird looking apartment yeah. bedroom when he's this big wig with this most beautiful place in the world. Like I I think he's I think it's weird this yeah. whole thing about Benjamin. I think yeah. you're right. I think he's kind of struggling. And yeah. he's just kind of a, a good swindler of people. Like the way he talks to like Vanderhof like, and that's the one of the big parts. Yeah. For me. He's he's just like uh it, well it, because you you're brilliant you have great ideas and like t- says it to uh his wife you know <laughs> yes. like oh that's because you're brilliant you know like <laughs> just t- talking people do. up so they say yes he's more he's doing you know? anything he can yeah to, to, to get this deal done yeah flipping it around and saying wait so so mr vanderhoff you're telling me that if if you had a local spot like on a tv show that we could do this and he says well yeah that'd be good he's like i'm inspired yeah <laughs> he's just like you know, i know nothing about video games I found what you just said fascinating. Riveting. <laughs> <laughs> Zoltar. Gelatinous cube. Amazing. <laughs> Riveting. 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 <laughs> That's how we get sponsors, too. It's like, I know nothing about hot sauces, but I found what they do. Fascinating. It's delicious, though. <laughs> well, and it also doesn't make much sense. Like, even let's say he was, like, a big wig. Where what is What is he spending so much time on, on like, a local cable access television yeah. show? To, to basically just get the contract of an arcade? Yeah, like for the advertising for a large arcade. And he just, he just t- gave them $10,000. Yeah. So that means he would have had to have somehow gotten thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 from Noah's Arcade or believe that this cable access show could actually then make more money in the future. Seems like a weird, just a weird yeah. gamble overall. It is a weird like thing. Like where what's his payoff? You know, yeah. like like you're saying, it's it's if he if he wants to exploit this, like because Garth reads it later, <laughs> he's like he's like Saturday exploit <laughs> exploit public access TV show. <laughs> I'd hate to be those guys. <laughs> it's like, it's so, but he, but <laughs> the whole point is like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I can sell this to Vanderhoff. He doesn't have the rights to the show. He wants the advertising from Noah's Arcade. But if Wayne Wayne's World, if they don't comply and they throw it, like there's no show. There's no show. He can't keep the show without Wayne and Garth. Yeah. Like so, what's the point? And he, yeah, it just doesn't make much sense to me. But I, I don't know. Going back to the the meeting, and he says, and he's back to it, and he's back to his yuppie stuff. He's like, so I pop in one of the VHSs. I have a, like I said, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like you douche. <laughs> Um, and then he's like, but he said, take, take these cashier's checks. Let them know that I'm serious. He's like, and these two, these two cashier's checks for $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, and they're, uh, you guys are interested in money. Excuse I'll just burn me? these up right now. <laughs> A baking powder. <laughs> <laughs> I like, uh, also, um, when he's buying that strat, uh, yeah. Dana Carvey on the drum set actually playing drums you can and it's not even that he like went in a studio and recorded the drums and then like faked it the the kick drum air is moving yeah perfectly with his kick drum and you can see like he does he's he has playing his, he has his garth smirk it kind of fades a little bit because he's like actually paying attention to what he's doing you know yeah i always thought that too like ever since i saw this movie like that looks real and it is he's yeah. actually he, doing he that did solo. it on saturday night live too church lady played drums Oh shit! Like live on a sketch, and it was awesome. <laughs> Church lady did a drum solo on Saturday Night Live, and it was like Dana Carvey knows what he's doing. Oh yeah, Dude. he does. It was awesome. I I love that, and then I love it, and when he smashes those last symbols, he's like, and that guy just walks up silently behind him, <laughs> just like, "Dude, you're just amazing." <laughs> Burnout. Thanks. Yeah. I like to play. Yeah. I mean, if you're a drummer in the world and you've never said that, you've never said, thanks, I like to play, and just hit yeah. the bell of a cymbal without a kick drum on it, like, you're not a real drummer. <laughs> Though, speaking of Garth, too, like Dana Carvey's improvisation is uncredited. The, the Foxy Lady, mm-hmm. that's that's funnier to me today than it 
ever was. I agree. His the and apparently apparently it was improv. Mm -hmm. Like he was just supposed to like the camera was supposed to zoom in and knock him back. But he just played, they played the Foxy Lady. And he just stood up, and started doing the dance. <laughs> Foxy, <laughs> do key, do do key. And then he gets confused by his thrusts. <laughs> yes, <laughs> his little flannel uh, wrapped around his waist yeah. is, is, is very phallic, and just go. <laughs> blah, blah. Uh, apparently, Mike Myers like hated him doing that. He's like, "What are you doing?" And they, that made the final cut. He's like, "What the hell's going on? Why is this in there?" It's like because it's fucking funny. Because it's awesome. It's and very he's funny. like people's. Like on, in the reviews and everything, they're saying that Dana Carvey is not funny. I think he's almost funnier, if not better, than Wayne in this movie. There is this is one of those instances where um, I do think he is hilarious. And the unfortunate thing is, again, this is how I basically met Dana Carvey. Yes. Yeah. And I think this is the funniest he's ever been. Yeah. Yeah. To be completely honest, I with agree. You. Yeah. I. I've seen his other stuff. I've seen him in doing other bits. I've Master seen him of come back. Master of Disguise it is horrible. It's some of it's tough to watch. I'm sorry, <laughs> man. His, like his co his comedic like as a comedian is hilarious. He, he's okay. one of the yeah. best voice in person is in improv. Uh, what do you impersonation? Yeah, impersonation. Yes. Yeah. He, he's he's incredible at impersonations. Yes. Uh, but yeah, movie wise, like, eh, yeah. yeah. Didn't and really hit the mark. He he really came into like doing kind of creating almost the micro impressions to where he does those impersonations. Yeah. But it's like five seconds of like a, a, a an actor or somebody doing a small thing, <laughs> like stubbing their toe. Yeah. And so, you know what I mean? And so he kind of started in on that. And yeah. it was very funny. Yeah. I like to add that Benjamin's place looks like Patrick Bateman's place in American Psycho. Like it could, it could he's you think it's like the same? almost oh, the same thing. Like so he's, just he's very clean, just like plain art on on the wall and I, books about how to please a woman you know, for her pleasure. We never saw that wait Shaky's waitress ever again. That's right. Benjamin might just be a serial saying, killer. <laughs> that the product placement scene is just so perfect. It might be my movie. favorite scene. It, it's <laughs> it's like. It, like even there, there's that there's that weird black and white video of the of a hand holding some pills. Little yellow, <laughs> different. <laughs> New print, little yellow, <laughs> different. <laughs> I can't talk about this anymore. It's giving me a headache. Here, take try two of these. <laughs> and then he just like tips the bottle over. And there's just two pills in it. <laughs> it's like here, switch the camera to me, Jeremy. It's like I wish I had something delicious to drink. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no we don't believe in product placement around here no not at, <laughs> not all. Not at all you know it's like people just do things just to get paid yeah and it's really sad it's really disgusting <laughs> Put your glasses off <laughs> yeah. and here, do you, you do one for felix yeah, yeah. right now do one for felix gray right now do one for felix yeah, do it gray. do it it's like ah uh, all this light it's just getting right to me ah uh, yeah oh, thank god <laughs> That's so much better. <laughs> do you have? Do we have any Pepper Joes? <laughs> Where, where's the Pepper Joes? <laughs> you know, you know what really makes me hungry? Podcasting. Mm. And the only thing that goes good with any sort of meat or any sort of food at all, Pepper Joes hot sauce. <laughs> 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 Fine, you're gonna one up. You're gonna one up me. <laughs> I just ran a marathon. You know what I'm craving? Liquid sustenance. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> uh. Anyway, we're off the rails. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's move. Oh uh, well, hold on. Last it is a choice, and it's the choice of a new generation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, l my last part of like, I don't know why certain movies uh, like this. There's the little things that stick with you that like I don't think other people think of. For me, it's the. Uh, it's when Wayne finally gets Cassandra and he's there. First first of all, it's the only scene where Wayne is not wearing a hat. Oh, I hate and it. And it looks really weird. I hate it's very it. Cuz that's clearly a wig, right? Oh yeah. Okay, like it just looks really weird to me that this is the only scene he doesn't have a hat on and he's got his little <laughs> tidy whities <laughs> Yeah. But these two the 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 camera one, mm -hmm. camera two. Camera one. It's really camera funny. Two. But the she answers the phone and she's like, oh, hey, Anthony. He goes, who's Anthony? Who's, who's Anthony? Anthony? Who's Anthony? My drummer. My drummer. <laughs> I, don't know okay. why. <laughs> I don't know why that's one of the funniest lines of the movie to me. I when, love when that. When he hikes scene. up his tidy waddies, yeah. his ass is just hanging around. <laughs> and he goes up to the mummy thing and like, just clenches his butt cheeks. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, it's like he's trying to pick it up. He's like, <laughs> 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 oh, 
Oh, it's so fucking <laughs> funny. Gratuitous dude. sex scene. Gratuitous sex scene. Uh, and I also I also love when they when they do meet up again and they they go to the rooftop, and and then you see Stacy. It's like when he says, "Hello, Stacy." <laughs> <It's like, laughs> they, they're talking about her like in uh, in Cantonese. It's like she has very nice legs but very low self esteem. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> I like when she's like, I, I learned English from the Police Academy movies. And, <laughs> like, are we talking Winslow? Yeah, we all did. <laughs> and then, and then, sure enough, the subtitles just keep going. And Wayne's just like, <laughs> <laughs> the, do you know what Cisa Bindua means? Cisa Bindua. Uh-uh. It means where is the toilet? Cisa Bindua. Cisa Bindua. Well, you're scaring me. <laughs> yeah. Let's All, right. It. All right, let's move it on. So at the Alex Cooper concert, Wayne and Garth go backstage and make some important contacts. While filming the revamped Wayne's World under Benjamin's oversight, Wayne and Garth find it difficult to adjust to the professional studio environment. After Wayne ridicules Noah Vanderhoff on the show, he's fired, leaving Garth to host the show on his own. This infuriates Garth and jeopardizes their friendship. The, the song, the, this soundtrack mm-hmm. is really good. Uh, we talked about it a little earlier, like some songs that are actually in the movie, like Loud is Love, yeah. or sorry, Loud Love by Soundgarden are not actually on the soundtrack, which is disappointing because yeah. it's such a great song. But one of the songs that is on there is uh, S- Sicka Mica Nico, Sicka Mica Nico by Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, and it's like, it's so, it's one of those weird songs where it so perfectly fits the scene there. It's a shot from behind them while they're yeah. driving down the interstate and they're going to the concert. Yeah. And it's such vintage. It was recorded uh, for Blood Sugar Sugar Sex Magic, but it never made the album. Mm. But that that song fits so fucking perfect in that scene. Like I don't know why it's it it makes the song better. Yeah. I know it's what part you're of the talking scene. about. It's it, it's isn't that the one where he's when he's pulling the licorice yes. from yes. the dispenser? Dope so cool. Fun. And it's classic and chili peppers. Mirth Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just so good, man. It's a great song. Oh, my gosh. Uh, Alice Cooper is the fucking best. Um, like, 80s, 80s Alice Cooper, like, this kind of era. Like, he's he's old as fuck, but, I, like, I just heard a podcast where someone just saw him, and he's still, Killing like, it. amazing Doing on stage. Doing the devil's work, man. Yeah, it's awesome. I, uh... I love him in this movie, and <laughs> the, the <laughs> fact that he's like this history buff, which he is in real life, apparently. He's just this history buff. Like every town he goes to on tour, he's just like, well, I find this more interesting than playing rock shows or seeing boobies, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> he, I, and I guess they never told they just told him that right. you were just going to perform a song, <laughs> yeah. and they and then they handed him all that dialogue. And he, goes, <laughs> he goes, all right. It's essentially a monologue like <laughs> that, he's, is. that they just hand to him. He's like, well, Milwaukee certainly had its fair <laughs> share of visitors. <laughs> <laughs> French settlers have been coming to the Wisconsin area since the early 1800s. Isn't that <laughs> right, Sean? <laughs> <Isn't that right, laughs> yes. wasn't, this, wasn't this land owned by Indians? Why, yes, Pete. It why, was. Why, yes, Pete, it was. <laughs> In fact, Milwaukee is actually uh, <laughs> pronounced Miliwake, which is Algonquin for the good <laughs> land. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so classic. It's so fucking classic. And he apparently said that like from that moment on, the we're not worthy is just all he gets for the for the rest of his life. <laughs> we'll just bow down and we're Good. not worthy. We are not worthy. We are no. not worthy. <laughs> no, it's not at all. Does this guy know how to party or what? It's I mean, so like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's my like second favorite. Like from the ad portion of the of the yes. movie, it, this is so, his performance is so funny to me. I love it every time. And and for reference, from anyone out there that's never gone to a large concert and gone backstage and met the band, I'm going to tell you one thing. This movie got wrong. After the concert, no one plays their instrument backstage. <laughs> right. So there's a guy like noodling on the guitar. Yeah. It's like that doesn't happen. No. Yeah, we're not playing instruments anymore. We've done it. We've it's already done. done that. It's done. We don't need to practice anymore <laughs> is, tonight. Is backstage passes still a thing? I think so. Because I I met Rob Zombie, but it was before the show. It, Rob Zombie and Corn, and it was just in a different room. Yes, of, like a meet and greet. thing. Yeah, just a meet and greet thing, which was this my is my life. But this is very different. He, they're going into their suite, yeah, like their green room it, suite. That <clears throat> used to happen. Quite is that a bit. right? It used to just be this giant road party thing, like where the best you you'd have multiple levels. I had a corn backstage passes mm. in 1999. Damn, and there were like multiple levels of passes, right? Like the one pass got you into this like big area where everybody hung out 
and where there was no band members. And then the next pass got you into like where the roadies were. Okay. And then the next pass got you into like where the band was. Wow. There was this weird little, and of course I didn't make it. I wasn't a hot chick in leather pants. <laughs> sure. I sure. was just a guy that's like, I really love your music, Jonathan Davis. I'm Jonathan you're, Davis. You're a hot chick in leather pants to me, Mike. <laughs> Thanks, man. You are. <laughs> I, how did did you guys completely forget about Chris Farley being in this movie? Dude, hundred um, percent. First movie role. It's one of my favorite little scenes of this whole thing. When they go outside, yeah, and that is that is maybe my favorite moment of this entire. <laughs> you reference movie. that a lot. I do it a lot. He's <laughs> like, well, he, well, he's got to be big. It's got to be big. He hates to fly. He's like, yep, he'll actually be going down to St. Louis, be coming back up <laughs> in Chicago. <laughs> but like, doesn't he move? He points to the yeah. wrong direction. He goes, no, it's right here. <laughs> On his way to Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> Just being cr- his first movie role. Chicago. Right? <laughs> his way to Detroit. <laughs> Get and they clearly right said, here. Yeah. So is he is he the same guy in Wayne's World two though? Are we assuming that he's the same guy? Dude, I, I would I would I imagine. Want, I want that. I yeah. mean, I, I'm guessing he is, right? Yeah, because he's, he's kind of a bouncer at this Alice Cooper show, so he becomes a bouncer at the next one, right? Yeah. At what Wayne do Stock. what do we think about Wayne's World two? Can can you, do you t- think can we're you ever going to do that movie? Uh, yeah, maybe. I I love it. It's I think the it's same. Because they came out so close together, they they're the same thing. They're the same movie. It's just, the same thing. It's just, just with a second Jim Morrison. Part of it. And yeah. That's it. Yeah. They Which add sort of some weird. silliness to it, like, and they could have picked anyone else to play at Jim Morrison, but <laughs> yeah, it was fine. When they picked that guy, <laughs> yeah, like, who looks nothing I, like just, I, not I, Jim Morrison, he just looks like a blind dude. <laughs> <laughs> A blind dude on drugs. <laughs> yeah, he did. I like it just as much as the first one, but yeah. I, 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 the, this this movie is just what it is, and obviously we'll get to that. So but. who's your worst villain, Christopher Walken or Rob Lowe? I mean, it's always got to be Christopher Walken. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to punch him either, but yeah. <laughs> that is a that is very true, actually. And, and also, it's like, well, who's the old lady? That's my old lady. <laughs> 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 He's like, he is really good. At uh, we what, had what's to it, Del Preston? Yeah. Yeah. He's he's the That's, highlight. W- we had to beat them to death with their own shoes. shoes. Ozzy's not going to go on unless he's got a brandy glass filled with a thousand brown M and M's. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Ozzy went on and did that the, great the, show. <laughs> <laughs> he's like he's like like traumatized by his own like comedy. He's like we had to beat him to death with their own shoes. <laughs> But anyway, okay. anyways, I want to talk about since AJ is being great at acting right now, <laughs> Kurt Fuller in this movie as Russell. Yes. Oh yeah. You are Kurt Fuller. <laughs> really? Yes. Like in, like all of his roles, like you just remind me of him. Like you could be Russell in this movie. Russell, my guys. Yes, <laughs> you're my guys. <laughs> Come on now. Did you? Did you? Did you? Uh, so when he says, "I mean, we're looking down on Wayne's basement," only that's not Wayne's basement. basement. Isn't that weird? Yeah. And he goes. <laughs> Guard, that's a haiku. Guard, that was a haiku. <laughs> so right. I had I had to look it up. I, do you know what a haiku is? It's a short. It's it's five syllables, poem. seven syllables, five syllables, okay. and I'm like, this doesn't this doesn't what what are we what is this joke? <laughs> yeah. But if you break it down, I mean we're looking five down on Wayne's basement only seven. That's not Wayne's basement five. Oh wow. I don't understand the joke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get what's going on here. Uh, he's just like he just had Garth. a haiku in his mind, and he's like, "Hey, that's, Garth, that sounds like one." <laughs> but I think the joke is, why would he recognize that? <laughs> like, <laughs> Garth, that was a haiku. <laughs> All right, dude. And the the green screen. W- <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm in Delaware. Delaware. <laughs> 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 if I ever go to Delaware, that's what I'm going to oh, do. Oh, yeah. To be whisked I'm away to Delaware. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. I'm in Delaware. I uh, I think Penelope Spheres is actually in that booth, is too. Is she? That's her uh, director cameo. But I like um, the whole self-aware comedy, too, of... Uh, when they when they were talking to Chris Farley's character, the bouncer, he's like, he gave us a lot of information that might be important. <laughs> I love it. That that's so brilliant to me. But oh, um, yeah, while, while they're uh, uh, what's uh, he he brings on the sponsor, he brings his wife and everything. Yep. And uh, what Tom DeLuise or something? What's his name uh, from Encino Man? Yeah, my fucking Michael man, Michael my DeLuise. Dude. He 
I don't know why he's not in more movies. I love I love him in this movie, especially in Encino he Man. He killed it in Encino Man, yeah. dude, and he was so fucking good in this. His name is Alan in this movie. Alan, that's right. And, it, and actually, it was the same year. So he did this oh, wow. and Encino Man in the same year. That's and like, right. why didn't he do more? Yeah. yeah. He's he's like a good good looking dude. He's apparently he feels like a good actor. Yeah, I don't think you so. think so? Yeah, absolutely. Why did he do I, more? I just can I just say your wife is a babe. <laughs> Man, can I just say your wife is a babe? Well, thank you. <laughs> he's like, he's, do I scare you? Do you want me to? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. We did forget the. Uh, as far as I'm concerned. The funniest scene of the movie, okay, is the hockey, the street hockey scene. Oh God! Oh yeah, uh, oh, that's right. Like that, that to me, like because we all grew up playing like street hockey. Yeah, that was. I don't know if it came for, if if this movie revitalized it or what, but we would do what they were doing in the street. Game on, mm -hmm. game yeah. off. Uh, but I am I am asking all Blackhawks, Chicago Blackhawks fans out there, to stop doing the the trope. I mean, it's just so tired. It's oh, so no. tired. Of wearing a Griswold double zero yeah. jersey <laughs> and switch to a Campbell 22. Yeah, <laughs> Campbell 22. That's what I, I'm just asking you guys. Like, yeah. I know you're not Campbell 22. Yeah, I know you're not fans anymore because they're not good and I know you don't pay attention <laughs> anymore, but just get off the trope. I love Move this. to a Campbell 22. I love this. <laughs> and so St. Louis is still in the playoffs or? <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least we made the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but the, when, when um, uh, what's his girlfriend's name or his ex girlfriend's name? Uh, oh my, God. Psycho Hosebeast. When, when Psycho Hosebeast goes, Stacy, hi, hi Stacey. Wayne, hi. hi. That was that was a that was that was a moment that we rewound <laughs> so many times when she hits that car, dude. I can't tell you how many times me and my brother Bob just just lost it over and over and over on the VHS. It's unbelievable. There's something about a physical comedy bit in a movie where the camera is just locked off, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just pointed at a car, go, and the actor just does the thing. You know, it's. It, the it's it's all sound effects to me. Yes. I think it's just the hit, her hitting the car and tumbling over, and obviously her <laughs> <She's> reaction. <okay. laughs> it's the dynamics of it, man. It's it's like you said. It's her going very slowly, and it's kind of quiet. <laughs> hi, hi, Wayne. <laughs> and she hi. Goes, hi. It's the second <laughs> hi for me. Is that uh, what does it? <laughs> she could have just said hi, Wayne, and then <laughs> back to them, and then she hits the car with the <laughs> hi. <laughs> Apparently they tried that they tried the same joke on rollerblades for her. Yeah. And yeah. It just didn't quite hit the same. No. <laughs> they, 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 that's absolutely correct. Both literally and figuratively. Yeah. <laughs> I, I forgot to mention when and when they're doing their Benjamin Produce show at this point, the theme song. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne's World, Wayne's World, Party Time. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> It's Friday night. Party on, Wayne, and party on, girl. Yeah, that, that, that guy. <laughs> uh. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, welcome to Wayne's World. Party on, Garth. I guess. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's just so fucking good, man. All right. Party on, Wayne, and party, party on, on, Garth. Wayne's holding the <laughs> party on, Wayne, and party on, Garth. I mean, it did add better production value to the show. I'm just <laughs> right. that out we fly in the sign, please. It's we got to get a guy like that's that. That's the sign. Yeah. We got to get a lot guy like that to introduce us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So scene four, jealous of the attention Benjamin is giving Cassandra, Wayne and Garth reconcile and hatch a scheme to win Cassandra back by getting her a record deal. While Garth and their friends infiltrate a satellite station with the aid of Benjamin's assistant, Wayne goes to Cassandra's video shoot but embarrasses himself in an attempt to expose Benjamin's ulterior motive. Cassandra initially tells him to go home, but upon realizing that Benjamin is up to no good, she changes her mind and leaves for Aurora with Wayne. I get that Benjamin is like trying to like just kind of make a buck out of this and doesn't really care who he crushes and everything, but when he's... Like when he has uh, a Noah's Ark or with uh, Vanderhoff on Noah's the show, um, and he's got like sphincter boy on the cards and everything, so he's using the cards. And but like, 
and then he gets mad at that. But that's like that's the show, though. Like that's what you bought. It's his fault because he said I'm a big fan. But clearly, all he ever he didn't do his research. All he saw was that five seconds before he banged the shaky's waitress. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he didn't realize that they're just they make fun of every guest that comes on the show. Yeah, it's his fucking fault. Yeah, it is. There's there's no reason that. And again, I'm gonna bring it back around to it. You can't fire Wayne from Wayne's world. Right. And then what? You're going to bring in some random guy and just call him Wayne? That doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so you. That would have been It's like replacing see. one of us. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You, can't, you can't fire one of us. It's <laughs> <laughs> not. It's not. <laughs> I'm having a good time. Uh, but, <laughs> but that's the thing is okay, so you wanted it for the advertising. But then you're going to fire the host, and so the show is now kaput, and so you can't do advertising <laughs> for Noah, Noah's Arcade. If I'm it's gone done. off it's of this 90s. show, who's going to say fuck? That's right. <laughs> Every other sentence. <laughs> Sean, it's okay. Don't. <laughs> it's okay. I think I've surpassed you on customer <laughs> yeah, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> Um Where are we at here? Well, the... There was one interesting theory I saw that I had never noticed. Uh, Dana, Dana Carvey, so Garth's working on that robot hand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had never thought about this in my life, and Benjamin shows up. That's my prop. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, Jeremy can't have the bit. <laughs> Damn it. Jeremy's prop one. is a robot hand. Benjamin shows up, and he like is discussing the changes to the show, and the hand like starts going crazy. And the theory is, is that Garth is just a technological wizard and that he's building a robot to kill Benjamin <laughs> and that this that this hand recognizes that Benjamin's in the room and starts going crazy after Benjamin. <laughs> no, like, we don't like change. <laughs> we don't like change. We fear change. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Well, and then and then you get the T1000 cameo, yeah, which man. we talked about in the T2 episode. Yeah. Which, if you haven't seen that, that's a that's an awesome uh, the T the T one thousand has shown up in a ton of episodes. Yeah. But I have to admit that when I first saw this movie, I had not seen T two, so I had no fucking clue what this oh, w- like yeah. what was happening here. I'm like, did you see Laverne and Shirley then too? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, what is happening? <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's, move on to the next. It's bit. such a good cameo. Like I love that he reprises this and does this for. A little movie for yeah. ten seconds, whatever it is. They put but the glove on the bottle. He's he's convincing, man. Yeah. Like he's he's like he's T one thousand again. And the way he like they they should. I'm sorry, I was just in it. Like he's like right there. You know? Have you seen this boy? Yeah. <laughs> and uh. He he gets that a lot too. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah. God, I bet. I can only imagine. Um, the way uh Wayne when Wayne suspects that uh, Cassandra is doing shit with uh Benjamin. Um, the way he says, maybe he's poking you. Maybe he's poking Fuck, you. Fuck, man. <laughs> if I said that to any anybody, <laughs> yeah. like I would get fucked up. Like, that <laughs> is brutal. Like, whoa, that, what an accusation. How dare you, dude? That's fucked up. Well, first yeah. he screws me, then he screws you. It's Dutch door action. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Living a sheltered life in the suburbs of Chicago. Dude, check your ego, bro. Jeez, bro. Yeah, right. Dutch door action. <laughs> Do you guys do you guys know can you name all the S the Saturday Night Live adaptation movies that have been out there? Uh, name Superstar, them all? You don't have to name them all. Superstar, but like, Blues Brothers, Wayne's World. Wayne's World 2. Wayne's World 2. Um Coneheads. Coneheads, yeah, yeah. Damn. Uh, That's a good one. Stewart saves his family. <laughs> no. Blues Brothers 2000. Oh, yeah. Night at the Roxbury, Superstar, Ladies Man, It's Pat. <laughs> they made a movie. They did the the, the worst movie ever made. Is the Barb and Star one? No. Okay. But MacGruber is also MacGruber. One. Yes. And I think because you look at this, Blues Brothers for me is is the best of all these movies. Yep. In, in my opinion, followed by Wayne's World, followed by Wayne's World Two, and then it's just like Gah. I like. But MacGruber then MacGruber, that. MacGruber like. I comes like s- in at the end and helps save the franchise. I have a soft me. spot for Superstar too. Do you really? Yeah, I, I really like that movie. I have a soft spot for Night at the Roxbury. Yeah, yeah, same, yeah, but, same. Yeah, <laughs> there was there was an interesting thought too that uh, do you remember the license plate for the Murph Mobile or Murph Mobile? Uh huh. It was uh, F E B two five nine, and there's a theory out there that uh, that that stands for February second, nineteen fifty nine. 
the day the music died was February 3rd, 1959, oh. and that he wants to live forever when the music was still alive. Wow. And then the music hasn't died yet. Oh. I have about no clue if that's real. If that's <laughs> a real thing. <laughs> You're talking about Big Bopper. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Buddy Holly or whatnot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God damn. Clear, or, uh, where, Iowa? Clear, not Clear Lake. Clear Lake. Clear, clear Lake, Lake, Iowa. Clear Lake. Surf that's ballroom, right. dude. The surf ballroom. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're famous for killing music. <laughs> oh wow! Here in Iowa, wow. so yep. there you go. That's fun. That's, That's a, a good one. Fun AJ. thing to say. Yeah. Here, here, you know what? Here's the belt. Here's the belt for that. <laughs> I don't. I don't want it. I don't, I don't want, want it. it. <laughs> well, you want to move on to the final? Let's scene? do it. Yeah. So the Wayne's World crew hacks into Sharp Satellite Television and broadcasts the crucial taunt performance from Wayne's basement, where Sharp and Benjamin converge. Unfortunately, Sharp declines to offer Crucial Taunt a record contract, and Wayne's life falls apart. Dissatisfied with this ending, Wayne and Garth try a Scooby-Doo ending and eventually a mega happy ending in which Cassandra successfully signs a record contract and begins a relationship with Wayne. One of my favorite lines in the whole movie is, Garth, you've never been mad at anything in your life. <laughs> Just no passion from Garth ever whatsoever. I love that kind of <laughs> idea. I mean, I handled it okay, <laughs> but you shouldn't have bailed on me, man. <laughs> if about F, you're a gimp. <laughs> just like, dude, like, Wayne's pretty like he gets he gets by this point he's gotten real like real harsh on everybody. Yeah, I lost my girl. He's, I lost my best friend. He's been kind of a, show. a Dave in Encino Man about all this shit. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God, he is, isn't <laughs> oh, he? Man. Shit. That's a good point. Like, everybody owes me something. You know? Yeah, right? I don't owe anybody anything, but they owe me shit. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, like, upon rewatch, like, you're, you're meant to hate Benjamin so much for all this, right? But, like, the older me is kind of like, well, like, Benjamin, like, Gave you guys ten thousand dollars, yeah, which you didn't have, and now is going to take your show to the next level, and you signed a contract, yeah, that apparently you didn't read, and you, you didn't read it, and now you're mad at, at what's happening here, yeah. It's like it, it, it I, I'm kind of sad about how older me thinks about some of these movies <laughs> yeah. sometimes. It's like, well, that's fucking real life, Wayne. Grow up. You know what I think is that. I'm kind of mad at this movie for when I was a kid thinking like, yeah, you can't mess with their artist vision and this and that. And it's like, yeah, but then they're going to just keep doing it in their basement. They're not actually going to go do anything. In reality, you're right. Benjamin is going to take this show to the next level. Unfortunately, you're now dealing with like, you know what the worst part of like this whole transition was? Was the theme song that changed? That's about it. And that now was you got about a green it. screen. Yeah, you got all this cool stuff. Well, they, like and during on. the contract signing, he didn't read a damn thing. No, not at all. He just kind of made. I like what you did here. Yep, <laughs> he <laughs> made a joke about yeah. it. Yeah, and and so mm. Mm. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, I agree. Like five years ago, I would have been on Wayne's side. You know, yeah. I've been like, I fuck corporate. I don't. I don't need money for my art. You know. Yeah. Like I, w- we'd go to shows at, like an hour away in Illinois or something like that, and they'd pay us, and we're like, no, you keep it because we are artists and we want you to keep going. We need that money to get home. You know. Yeah. Like it's we need that money to keep doing this show. I've got the a way that we do. Payment. Exactly. <laughs> yes. It's, it's like, come on. I just. You're right. At, at all, all things considered, is Benjamin a, probably kind of a douche? Yeah, yeah. 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 Does he wear too baggy of pants? Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> that ass is way too tight to be wearing those pants. They're damn right. Um, you know, that's a lucky cop. Anyways, <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I completely agree with you. Like Benjamin's actually not as bad as it all seems. <laughs> yeah. It's like humanize the goons is what yeah. we do. Here. That's yeah. what we like, do. Man. I mean, hey, that's that's the world. Yeah, you signed up for this. Yeah, yeah, you signed the contract. Obviously, bro. his heart's not in it, but he's in it for money. Mm-hmm. But at, if he gets paid, Wayne and Garth get paid. Well, and let's be honest, like Wayne can't be getting a Cassandra, you know, like like that gives too much hope to too many people out there. Like it's got to be, <laughs> it's got to be Benjamin and Cassandra, because like you can't yeah. think, you can't let me think that I could also get a Cassandra. Right. You it's, can't let me think that. If you're funny, man. That's that's but all I'm it not. takes. You, you are, you are sometimes. You're not the one on this show, funny. But I'm just kidding. Oh I'm kidding. God I'm kidding. Damn. Holy shit. I'm hey, at least I'm not as short as Frankie Sharp, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. Frankie Sharp, Sharp Records. Never, never noticed that until this viewing of like 
Dude is unbelievably short, and I had to look him up. Frank DeLeo, he was in Goodfellas. He was oh, a very yeah, small part. Yeah, you're right. Fuck. Uh, what was he? I can't remember his name, but he was a very small part there. Uh, uh, anyway, he's sorry. Five one. Five one. Frankie Sharp is five one. So Whoa. he's he's got Tom Cruise ability Oof. where he could just look at racks all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Cassandra's in stilettos <laughs> and standing next <laughs> to Frankie, Frankie Sharp's Sharp. down here. <laughs> yeah, 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 Frankie Sharp's down here. <laughs> My eyes are up here. There's also a thing uh, I I heard this on a Howard Stern interview with Dana Carvey that uh, unfortunately, like you'd like to think of Wayne and Garth is like. For real, you know, but yeah, like yeah. Mike Myers was very difficult to work with. It sounds like he's continued to be that way. Yeah, but he, he knows what he's doing. Dana Carvey's a pretty <laughs> chill guy. Uh, definitely was the bigger person in this movie. And Mike Myers has gone on to such international fame with Austin Powers. But and Man uh, of Mystery. But Dana Carvey used to do an impersonation of Lorne Michaels, mm. where he would. Um, you do the no well and he, well actually and he and he brought his he would always bring his pinky up to his mouth, uh and like there was there was a major tension for a long time because Dana Carvey thinks Michael Myers stole that impersonation for Austin Powers oh and then for never Dr. evil yeah and then never gave credit to him for that and oh. they have since like I guess reconciled a bit about that but like. That's that's pretty shady. Like yeah, it it's is. like uh you just made you just made the biggest career of your life off of like this impersonation. Yeah. Maybe there's some credit there or yeah. something, but yeah, I mean, oh well, what it's, is it? It's crazy to think about that like cuz even in interviews and like everything that Mike Myers has done now and I'm sure he's mellowed out and everything that thinking back like that they, there was some tension, that he was difficult yeah. to work with, that he was, like, kind of dramatic and, you know, difficult with everybody on set and very, 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 very controlling in aspects of this. Well, Sphere, you know? uh, the director, Spheris, uh, she blames Mike Myers on getting her pretty much fired from the sequel or not hired for the sequel because he had such a hard time working with her on this movie and it's such a shame and yeah. I, I read that like they have he, she has since forgiven him because she saw Austin Powers and saw I was like that's brilliant okay I still held a little bit of resentment towards right. you but I see you're a talented motherfucker right. so <clears throat> it's it's a shame like researching these movies and doing this nostalgia kind of dive because it takes the, like the yeah. it, I know it <laughs> takes a, like a little bit of the light out of it because I'm like I wish everything was just like so copacetic and fine yeah. But to know that Mike Myers was kind of a dickhead is yeah. a little heartbreaking. Those during, Canadians. During this <laughs> yeah. filming, if Mike Myers was an ice cream flavor, he'd be pralines and dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's like one that. of my favorite lines. It's <laughs> yeah. so overshadowed when he's like, Give me, give me the flashlight, Russell. Dude, I love it. Give me the flashlight, <laughs> Russell. Like it. it's a gun. He's like, he's like pointing it like he's. It's like, okay. It's okay. <laughs> He's going to be okay. okay. Praline <laughs> like and dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why well, I, think favorite things. I think he's better than Mike Myers in this yeah, movie. Probably. Yeah. One of those yeah. scenes. Yeah. Landed on my keys. <laughs> <laughs> you say that all the time. <laughs> I say it so often. Wait up. Hey guys, I landed on, I my, landed keys. on my keys. <laughs> All right. Oh, you got anything else yeah. on that, boys? No, that's it. Man. All right, we have stripped away the nostalgia. We've looked at this with a modern eye. AJ, what do you think your modern day rating is on this bad boy? I I really enjoyed watching this movie again, um, and I didn't feel the need to turn it off for like, oh, I'm good. I can stop at the 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 three quarters mark again. Um, I like seeing um the whole th the whole movie pan out. Essentially, there's like doing the research now, like you were saying, Sean, it kind of adds a little bit of a, a tint to mm -hmm. the whole thing. And uh, and watching the jokes and still laughing like out loud pretty much by myself, like just at these jokes. That's a that's a great sign of a good movie. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, you just can't be a cover band and, and get a, a record deal, though. Okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry guys. You're not allowed. You're, you're not allowed to. You can't play. You can't play these songs and, and be like, oh yeah, no, we yeah. get a record deal. Doesn't happen that way. So, unfortunately, um, thank you for saying that. Because of this record deal that shouldn't exist, uh, it's just false hope. Gave me false hope for for basically until I was 25. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and give this. 
a 7.2. Sean, what about you, buddy? What was that, 7.5? You nostalgia? were a 7.5 nostalgia. Yeah. I, uh, AJ came down a little bit. Watching this movie, it, I, I agree with AJ wholeheartedly. It's, it doesn't ever get old. It is just like one of those movies that's kind of a warm blanket at night. You know, you get done with the day and you put on Wayne's World. And it's always a delight. I love all of, like there's like I love movies like especially comedies where there's things that you think are really funny, but you aren't sure if other people do. <laughs> but once you meet that person, you get really excited. Yeah. You know, you just that was funny like too. when I said like his his smile toward like yeah that, that <laughs> smile. Like I I don't find anybody else who thinks that's funny, and I like that. It feels personal yeah. in that in that in that way. Um, it yeah, what AJ said like listening and and finding that Mike Myers is kind of hard to work with. It taints the movie a little bit, but I can't judge the making of it. I have to judge the movie. Uh, I'm the same, seven point five. Seven point five for Shauner. I'm I'm gonna go seven point eight actually. I'm going up from my nice. nostalgic rating. I just think it's such an important movie to mm -hmm. '90s culture. And it and it doesn't like there's nothing like we can look back on this movie and go, ooh, they shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Like which we do on a lot of eighties and nineties <laughs> yeah, movies. Like true. it's it holds up completely. It's it's an all the way through movie. It's it's great. It's the soundtrack. It's so important culturally. So yeah, I'm a seven point eight. You're right. You're right when you say that it's it's weirdly like culturally important <laughs> kind of. It's just it, like it is. It's just like an important piece. It's a time capsule piece of right. the nineties. Right. It really is. What and so Tyler say? executive producer Tyler Dark says this one's gonna hurt guys. But with my modern viewing, Wayne's World to me is definitely a product of its time. Ooh. The movie still has some great comedic moments, but I'm not sure if that's me talking or still a little bit of nostalgia. I found it kind of hard to lock in with a lot of the humor being a lot older now. Of course, I see the moments younger me would have been on the ground, side split with laughter, but it just hit me different with the same. But it just hit me. But it just didn't hit me the same as it did back then. I still love the whole cast, and while of course I remembered the big roles like Mike Myers and Rob Lowe, I swear I did a real double take when randomly and for such a quick bit I saw Chris Farley. <laughs> I'll always have mad respect for this movie, especially for all the laughs I had as a kid. So I want to be as gentle with my score and pray my fellow Patreon members don't burn me at the stake for this one. <laughs> Without further ado, my otter, my modern eye rating is going to have to be a 5.9 out of 10. Wow. Whoa. But that's why we averaged this stuff. So hey, group, I feel you, man. Group modern day rating is going to be a 7.1, which is going to put us tied with the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you what, know what? I, I'm just saying, is this a movie that you, if you put on, you're going to watch all the way through? Absolutely. Yeah. Both of those. I yes. would do it. I think. You may not seek it out. Oh, but that's a double on, future. You're in. <laughs> a double are you? Feature. Are you? The Mirthmobile and all them other cars. <laughs> that's right. I wonder. I wonder. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I wonder which ones of uh, Dom's crew had a uh, licorice dispenser. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably Jesse, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's late, but it's great, baby. <laughs> Well, with that, we hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for being here. Tune in next Wednesday for another great episode chosen directly by our Patreon members, Major League. That is our oh, baseball man. movie of All the right. summer. It's going to be a good one. And then we're going to follow that up with another beautiful top five episode. And if you're new to the podcast, go back this time last year. We did Blood Spurt. <laughs> All one word. Blood Spurt. Great, great movie. That's a Go one. check that episode out. The The... Uh, the, the longing, the long uh, taking time to watch someone reminisce yeah. is a half an hour in that movie. <laughs> also, humanized Chong Lee. Yep. And just <laughs> Kumite, baby. Kumite. <laughs> and last th but not least, we got a voicemail. Let's listen to today's voicemail 319 804 Hey guys, my name is Jared. I live in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, just wanted to let you know I love the podcast. Thank you. Um, I also was a bit surprised at some how some of you look. I thought maybe Mike would look like kind of like a Durs, you know. A Durs? But instead, he has this crazy awesome beard yeah. and is badass looking. Anyway, that's not a slight. Um, love the podcast. Um, I'm hoping you guys will do Hook one day. That Ooh, was my favorite movie growing up. Um, I even named my dog Rufio. Nice. Show, so. Yeah. Um, thanks again, guys. Take care. Bye. We will be doing. We Hook. will be yes. doing. Hook. We need another Spielberg. 
we're, that's coming up in the summer, but we're we're gonna be doing hook. I guarantee you. I look like a Durs in my head. No, yeah. 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 <laughs> I uh, I can honestly say that uh, I didn't realize what Dustin Hoffman looked like except for Hook for a long time. Yes, 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 yes. So yes. Yep. I I just I have to say that it's coming. All right, thanks for listening, guys. Please stay in touch with us by following on all of our social media platforms. At Confused Breakfast on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and Confused Be Fast on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review on the podcast platform of your choice right now. Also, we have merch. You know you want to rep the Confused Breakfast in public. Mugs, stickers, shirts, all kinds of goodies. Go to confusedbreakfast.com for a direct link. And don't forget about our voicemail number, 319-804-9596. Links to everything you could ever need from us are in the show notes or at confusedbreakfast.com. This includes a way to follow all of us individually in our personal projects that we want you to check out. Mission of the day, tell your friends about us. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.